So we must do two things, two great things together to encompass that enormous new view that lies before us, but to encompass it within the framework of science, to see it within the whole categorical framework of science, and to see that these two are not separate, but that they are wedded. The bigness of the idea, the newness of the idea, the greatness of it is one with the structure of science, the structure of being itself. So the requirements for the word as the word have been met through mind, spirit, and soul. We have there the minimum of synonymous terms required to fulfill that place value, that point of intersection. When that uh, requirement has been met, the dynamic itself moves the order on. Moves the order on now from the word as the word to the word as the Christ. So we come to the word as the Christ and we see that it is characterized through three synonymous terms constituting one indivisible element and those three are soul, principle, life. We have our creative basis of the word in place and now the Christ can do something with that basis. It isn't that we can do something with that basis. That would be to uh, apparently fall out of the order, although we never do fall out of the order. We would remain in the order, but we would be uh, recalculated. Uh, we would be corrected by the flow of the negative feedback system of Christian science would uh, fluctuate our experience in such ways to send us back to the one mind, to reestablish the basis again. So the basis now is mind, spirit, and soul, and we see that the Christ can come in and take that basis in order to calculate with it, to reorganize it, to restructure it, in order to reproduce. That's what you have in the days of creation at uh, that point of the third day where you have two great tones. You had the tone of the dry land of the third day, and you had the tone of the seed within itself where the word goes over to the Christ. So the dry land belongs to the identity of, of the uh, creative elements, and the seed within itself belongs to identity again, but identity in the sense of being able to keep on being what it is. And for a creative order, a generative order, something that is being generated, this is the reproducing of the seed within itself. Here we see that that same kind of a feeling is present, a kind of a three and a half point from the word as the word to the word as the Christ. Soul at the point of the word as the Christ is saying now, I can take that identity of the primal basis of mind, spirit, and soul. And I can re what? Restructure that. I can reproduce that. I can represent that over and over and over again. 
over and over and over again. Soul also says that basis of mind, spirit, and soul is identified with and as principle. You see, it is soul, principle, life. And we need to pick up soul, or, or uh, we put it that way, but you know that the soul has to, to reappear again in the Christ to, to be sure that that link is made that says, now, now can you see that mind, spirit, soul is identified with principle, not with a person. So that no personal element can come in, no personal sense of that basis, no personal sense of using that basis. What uses the basis? What is it that uses the basis? It's the, it's the Christ, it's principle. It's principle that operates with that basis. It's the basis of the principle. It's the creative basis of a, of a principle, the divine principle. So it has coincidence with principle. This is why we, we often say, or we certainly bring it up in our synonym classes, that principle has to do all to do with seeing the idea in its principle, with keeping the idea in its principle, with tracing everything back to its principle, that every idea as the same principle, that an idea must be seen in a principle, that you can't take the idea out of its principle. See, there's all this principle tone. Of don't disrupt the unity now. Because the human mind wants to disrupt the unity by saying, oh, mind, spirit, and soul, isn't that wonderful? And the solution is starting to come out, and now I can do something with that solution. Now I can take that which is appearing as the dry land of soul, and I can do something with it. I can work with it. I can demonstrate something with it. No, no. The word as the Christ says, no. It's principles, basis. Therefore, the solution that's coming forth is principles, solution absolutely identified indisruptibly with principle. And when principle operates, it operates dynamically. What does it do? It brings forth life. It brings forth the infinite individualizing now of the infinite individuality within that basis. So, uh, as that, that self-declaration uh, is working in consciousness, we see that, that, um, that as we go along the lines of the word, the line of the word, that we are identical with principle. You see that as we stay with the whole line of mind, spirit, and soul, mind, spirit, and soul, the, the principle of the word order knows when that requirement is actually met within consciousness. When it is actually met within consciousness, we are identical with our principle. We are identified with, with the principle. And this one principle is working out that which is the idea in its own mind. It's bringing forth that infinite individuality of the word individualize that. Can you hear soul 
principal life. And now I don't try to go methodically through different levels and everything. I want to just now get be caught up, have us be caught up in the flow now. We know how to work with that uh, um, pattern that's been given us in the first point of intersection. And I just want to now try to, to build up the the meaning of each further element. So that's the individualizing of the infinite individuality now of the one life at the point of the word as the Christ. By the way, what law is it that is the law of individualization. Not truth, life, and love. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Okay, I I was just wondering. All right. So, when the requirements of the word as the Christ are met, the whole dynamic of the calculus moves on to the word as Christianity. So we get the sense of an outcome or an output or a result or the effect of word as word and word as Christ. We get really the um, demonstration. We get the pure demonstration of word as word and word as Christ. And that pure demonstration is characterized by life and truth. It's the result of the word as the word and the word as the Christ. You, uh, if you look at John Dorley's epitomes, you see that um, at the word as the word, he, he characterized that as order. It's the basic order, actually. Order uh, will, um, at right at this point of word as word, we see that order characterizes really the, the whole vertical, but it is pinpointed. The essence of that order is mind, spirit, and soul. The word as the word, as the basic order. The basis, the order that is the basis of all order. Yeah. And then at the point of the word as the Christ, identity, we saw it was all to do with identity, with identifying mind, spirit, and soul as principle. You see? then that moves on to the word as Christianity. And John Dorley epitomized this as the line, picking up the first coordinate, the first spiritual coordinate in uh, that whole framework that Mrs. Eddy gives. I'm not sure I can uh, quote that exactly, but uh, she says that... um, Christian science, what something, the infinite calculus. Christian science is the infinite calculus defining the line, plane, space, and fourth dimension of spirit. Gosh, I hadn't hadn't thought of that in a few days, and now it sounds completely different to me because she says, Christian science, uh, I I believe she says Christian science. Christian science is the infinite calculus defining the line, plane, space, and fourth dimension of spirit. And so with each uh, further vertical, we will see how the, the, uh, the plane is defined, how the space is defined how the fourth dimension 
uh, of spirit is defined through the remaining verticals. But here we see that what is being defined is the line, it's the line of the word, so that what comes out of that uh that activity of the Christ to individualize the infinite individuality of the word is a, a straight line, is the line of spirit. It's, um, it's so that whatever comes out of that order is not just randomly uh, randomly appearing, randomly placed, uh, unrelated to anything else, but it belongs to a whole realm, the realm of the word, the field of the word, and that field is showing forth or demonstrating the pure line of the word line of the word order. This you see in uh, anything that you work through or demonstrate um, on the basis of the days of creation or as we will see on the basis of, of the, the word in the word matrix that what comes forth belongs to a line. Okay.